All right, we've got 10 days to get this 250R ready for the sand dunes. So we gotta get cracking. I wanna get the engine pulled out of here, but there's a number of parts that we're gonna be stripping from this thing to save weight. And the skid plate is one of them, and also the Nerf bars. I think getting these out of the way will make pulling the engine a little bit easier too. We weighed in at 365. In its current format, I think we can get it down 30 pounds. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the days have been running really long working up until now, trying to get the Tri-Z and this 250R all finished up and ready for the sand dunes in 10 days. But sometimes that's just the nature of the beast. But anyways, I do have a trick up my sleeve for weight reduction. Some stuff came in the mail. We are gonna get into that a little bit later though. Let's finish up getting this engine out of here first. Come on, man, I don't got time for this shit. All right, that is going to make getting the engine out super easy. Now, we're gonna have to lose as much weight as we possibly can on this thing because I've added a couple modifications to myself. If you know what I'm saying, if you know what I mean, I got fat is what I'm trying to say. But anyways, I can feel the weight loss God speaking to us. Look at all that weight we're shaving, plus the plastics. We're not even gonna run the plastics. I'm just kidding, guys. We're not gonna delete the plastics, but I am planning to take quite a bit off of this to save some weight. The f You gotta be fing kidding me. The bottom of this battery just fing fell off. I've never seen that before. I guess that's what happens when you use your drills as hammers. If you work on stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Well guys, I think I'm gonna get this exhaust off and then it's gonna be time-lapse time because I am just really not feeling it tonight and I'm not in a situation where, you know, normally I can just say it's time for bed and uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow. But because of the time constraints, I've gotta get moving on this thing. It's possible that we'll have plenty of time, but I have to factor in, you know, we may not just put this thing together and, where the f is my wrench? We may not just put this thing together and it runs. There could be issues that we run into. That's all time that I kind of don't really have baked into those 10 days, but there's just no time to waste. So I don't have the luxury of skipping till tomorrow but uh, I just literally filmed an entire scene and forgot to press record. And I've just been doing stupid little things like that all night. And I think it's just better off that I do this on my own and you guys can watch from above. Well, it's the next day, it's a beautiful day out. We can work with the garage doors open. Feeling a lot better. Everything is okay, right? Right. Let's get these wheels off because they're heavy and we're not gonna be running them. Now, since we're setting this up for drag racing, we will not need the front brakes. That's just unnecessary weight. And it's actually a little bit of drag as well because the discs will actually rub just slightly on the pads. So we wanna remove all of the rolling resistance that we possibly can. Plus, from what I understand, the entire brake system with the calipers is around 11 pounds, and that's huge. 
Dude, either this thing is not that strong anymore or these bolts are just that tight. This is a custom junction that I made. The mounting bracket is anyways. A lot of this stuff on here, I custom fit. It really is a nice build. And we've got this really nice master cylinder. This top, jeez, man, super, everything on this is really tight. I wonder if I forgot to put anti-seize. This was before my anti-seize days. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, it's got this custom cover. It says Patriot M309R on there. That's custom engraved by this company, NPM Racing. They're also known as NPM Manufacturing. They did a lot of custom stuff on this machine and really made it special. It's almost a shame to be taking this off because it's such a cool piece. But we gotta lose the weight. Nobody needs front brakes. Nobody needs any brakes at all. Brakes deleted. Oh, actually I lied guys. We can still take our discs off of the back and lose even just a little bit more weight. Actually, it's pretty heavy. It's like solid steel. Definitely saving weight there and it's rotational mass. I'm also gonna come in here with some lacquer thinner and clean out the inner lips of our seals. Get some new gra uh, um, grease in there. Clean this side up too. Lacquer thinner is great for stripping grease and cleaning parts. You just gotta be careful you don't put it on like paint because it can actually eat the paint away. But man, it just eats up grease like it wasn't even a thing. I got to know how heavy those brakes were. We got the scale of doom out. You guys remember that from the Voodoo Banshee series? So I'm gonna put everything in this basket here. The basket is 0.208 pounds. We can zero that out now. And uh, we got all the hardware right here. Let's throw that stuff in the basket. Not all the hardware, some of it's in, still screwed in the brakes. 0.182 pounds. We've got these heavy ass discs. Oh man, 2.2 almost 2.4 pounds. The uh, brake line stays, throw those in there, that boosts it up a little bit. And then we've got this heavy ass brake system. Put all this shit in the basket because nobody needs brakes. This is all gonna go right in the trash. If I can There we go. Seven and a half pounds. Is that right, what? It feels so much heavier than that. Seven and a half pounds. Well, I guess there'd be a little bit of fluid in them too because I drained them, but I don't think there's three, four pounds of fluid in there. Whatever, that's seven and a half pounds that we don't need. I did put it on another scale and sure enough, it came out to the exact same weight. So I guess we could say that we'll call it an even eight pound loss because there would be fluid in there. But it doesn't matter because we're about to lose a shit ton of weight in the back end. I made the foolish mistake of not loosening up the axle while this quad was still on the ground. Jeez. But since we have this nice fireball racing anti-fade, I think, jeez, I can't believe how tight this shit is. What, what did I do? I built this quad. I must not have used anti-seize. All right, here we go. These anti-fades are usually pretty forgiving for removing axles. It's not like when you have regular axle nuts where stuff gets seized. Yeah, see, we're good. So have to take um, our little ring off here.
Now I'm itching away that swing arm against the new one, see if we save some weight. But I wanna clean up these parts, especially the linkage, because there's grease and stuff all over them. I think it's a good idea to clean that up and put some new grease on there. This Bike Master parts washer is so legit because you can keep it stored like I have down on the shelf there. So for DIY guys and like at-home fixer-uppers, this thing is literally perfect. It also just does a great job of cleaning stuff up like this linkage when you have all that dirty, grody grease and stuff in there. It's got these nice little uh, bristles in there. And depending on what solution you use, it does a really good job. If anybody's wondering, I use a mixture of either kerosene or diesel fuel. Either one's pretty much the same. And uh, I mix that with mineral spirits. It has a thin um, oil in it so that you won't get any rust on steel components, even if you don't dry this stuff off right away. It works really, really well. Plus it cuts grease awesome. It's also made of plastic, so it's not gonna rust out like the Harbor Freight ones. Nothing against the Harbor Freight ones or anything, but I've noticed the powder coating comes off of them, then they start to rust and eventually rot out. This one should pretty much last forever. All right, man, we're back at the scale of doom. We gotta do our comparison of swing arms. We've got the takeoff right here. This is, I believe it's a Hauser. It's a minus one, but you can look at the construction, man. It's super heavy duty. Everything on this is thick as hell because you know, you're gonna be jumping and stuff and there's gonna be a lot of force exerted on this thing. And the last thing you want is that thing snapping. And then of course, we've got our full flight racing. Plus eight, this thing is freaking awesome. I don't know, to be frank with you, because you know, we've got eight inch extended versus shorter, but really, really heavy duty. They feel pretty close. Honestly, the extended one might be a little bit longer. They've got the same bushings. I love running these Delrin bushings as opposed to bearings. Uh, and they also have the hardware in the carrier area. So they're both uh, equipped in the same way. It should be a fair matchup here. And uh, we're gonna find out in a second here. You can get those bushings from Full Flight Racing, by the way. Uh, they will fit any TRX 250R swing arm. So let's go with the Hauser. Make sure it's completely on there. 13.8 pounds exactly. I'm slightly nervous because I want, <laughs> I want the new one to be lighter, but uh, realistically, because we're adding an extension of eight inches, it's unlikely, but. Oh, dude, <laughs> 11 pounds, six inches. What's that, 2.2 pounds? Saving 2.2 pounds in the rear end already, man. High five. Right. Now, while we're on the subject of weight in the rear end, we've got our old takeoff axle. This is a heavy duty axle, man. This is an RPM Dominator. It's one of the heaviest axles that I think you can get for the 250R. Again, motocross axle. They have to be extra strong. It does have lightweight aluminum sprocket and disc brake hubs, but we've got the factory steel wheel hubs. So all of this is really heavy. I don't know what this weighs, but it is not light. Now, here is what's gonna be freaking awesome, is what's in this box, man. I got this in the mail, I don't know, two weeks ago. I've been dying to share this with you guys. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen it on my story. Oh, dude. Oh, what is that, Mike? It's like a freaking lightsaber, dude. It's a drag axle for the 250R made by Mod Quad. Man, check this bastard out. Is that amazing or what? This thing is entirely made of aluminum with the exception of the keys. So they have a key system in here to keep your hubs from spinning and whatnot. So these of course are made of steel and then of course the locking rings and the hardware. But otherwise it's entirely made of aluminum and it's super lightweight, man. It is absolutely crazy. And even more ridiculous is this carrier that literally, I feel like I could throw this thing to space. It's so light as compared to our heavy ass standard carrier. Psh, straight in the trash. It's just unbelievable the difference in weight. They don't even use seals on this thing. I mean, I guess you could run seals if you wanted to, but I think most guys don't. And then there's no spacer in between either. It is as minimal as you can possibly go to save as much weight as possible. And here's the thing, 
This is so important to have lightweight because it's rotational mass. Now, I forget the exact statistic. It's been a while since I've been into my weight loss stuff, but uh, I believe it's something like four times as effective to cut a pound from rotational mass as it is on fixed mass. So as an example, let's say you have a, a wheel that weighs 10 pounds. Well, if you added four pounds to that, it would be less, it would be more detrimental to your performance than it would be if you just added four pounds to the machine in like, let's say Nerf bars or something like that. And it has to do with inertia and how much energy that takes. So because this is rotational mass, that is going to be a huge savings and it's gonna make us go faster. Now this is stuff that I was never able to afford before, so it's really cool to be able to do this. And it's definitely one of those deals where if you've ever heard the saying, you gotta pay to play, this definitely applies in this scenario. It is not cheap stuff. Even with the dealer discount that my buddy Dave Moore passes on, I get it through Dave Moore Racing, it still costs around 700 bucks for this setup. If you're gonna go retail, getting the carrier and the axle is gonna run, run you around a thousand bucks. So it is an expensive setup, but it is freaking badass. And what's really cool too, is you can order this in 34 inches wide or 28 inches wide. And this, I got this one because it's adjustable. You can bring this in or out so you can run it uh, really nice and tight or you can go out to the outside. I was just afraid that with our plus three extended mo uh, motocross A-arms, which we are keeping on there, if we ran it super tight, you know, that's actually better for performance. It's good to have your weight over the wheels and tires, but I think it's just gonna look really silly and we can always play with that. You know, we can change it. So, see what it weighs. I know you guys are over there like, oh dude, can you just freaking weigh it? I don't give a crap about what it costs. That's what I'd be saying too. So let's first do these carriers. The first one is the standard carrier. It weighs 3.84 pounds. And this one is advertised at two and a half pounds on Mod Quad's site. Oh my gosh, dude, 2.1 pounds. So that's like half the weight. Oh my gosh. 1.7 pounds we saved there. Now these axles, this is where it's gonna be dramatic, man. Ugh, dude, this thing is heavier than hell. I've even got the hardware in here. So it's the full setup. Make sure we're not touching the bench over there. I think we're, we're airborne. 22, basically 22 and a half pounds. That is heavy as a fucking rock. Put that back, so we got 22.4. Oh man, what's it gonna be? Was it worth all the money? Probably not. 12.5, 12 and a half, dude. So we saved 10 pounds of rotational mass in the axle alone. If we stack this up here, 14 and a half pounds versus 26. We're just gonna say a half to make uh, math easy. So we're literally saving over 12, like 12 pounds in rotation. Well, this isn't rotational, but it is sprung mass because it's gonna be on the swing arm. But man, talk about some serious weight savings. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. So you can order these from Dave Moore Racing. If you mention my name when you're purchasing, you will get 10% off your order. And yes, they do make these for Banshees and other machines as well. All right, let's start getting some stuff installed here. Hopefully this will be a little bit better than the Tri-Z swing arm because that was a pain in the ass. Oh, is that beautiful. Nice. We've got our rear engine mount that goes in here. There we go. Well, that was a hell of a lot easier than the Tri-Z, I'll tell you that much. If you guys remember in the last video, we took the shock off and sent it out to have this serviced by Rocket Ron Racing. Not really so much for a rebuild, but to set it up for this build. So with the longer swing arm, uh, the leverage angles are different and everything. So he, uh, he switched the spring out, shortened it a little bit. And it used to be a dual rate, now it's a single rate. I don't really know all the reasoning behind it. That's why I have my guy, Rocket Ron, to do the stuff for me. But this should perform really nice. I don't know if you guys can tell, but he powder coated the spring a dark bronze color to match the build. And if you remember that cheap ass stainless steel bolt that was bent, got a brand new OEM bolt this time to put up top. I think we're gonna have to sling our reservoir over top. We've got this like freaking four foot long reservoir line. I'm doing my best to replace all of that aftermarket stainless steel hardware with OEM or at least better hardware especially for the suspension components. Now we can install our virtually weightless drag racing bearing carrier. 
man, that is freaking sweet. And this stuff was not going together uh, completely smoothly, by the way. You know, uh, you guys may have noticed, especially in the Tri-Z series, I've been showing some of the struggles. Um, but I did have to shave down the powder coating on here to fit our little stay in place. That's really uh, kind of procedure. When anything's powder coated, kind of got to shave that stuff down and make it fit. Put our old, well old, but the same caliper stay from the original setup. We'll pop right in place like so. And then I've got these nice tusk snap ring pliers. They're heavy duty, definitely a little bit easier to use than the universal ones that I was using like forever. Now we'll slide this racing axle in place. It's the first one of these I've ever installed. I'm gonna put some anti-seize just on the inside of our bearings so that it doesn't get seized in here. I'm not sure if there's any like special procedure to installing this. Cause you know, we don't have traditional axle nuts or anything like that. It appears to just kind of Slide in place like normal. <laughs> Man, does that roll smoothly. We've got a spacer that goes on here and you can see there's like a little cutout for the key to fit in. Like so. And we'll slide brake hub in place. And then this just has little pinch bolts that clamp that down and I guess it's installed. You know, I think a lot of this is really just with drag racing in mind. I mean, obviously <laughs> it's a drag racing axle. If you were using this for actual, you know, like trail riding and stuff like that, I could see there possibly being an issue, but uh, for just going in the straight line and really minimizing weight to the maximum extent, this is really, really awesome. It, and it rolls so nice and smoothly. There's no drag from any uh, inner lip seals or inner lips of like axle seals and stuff like that. This should really help with performance. And we've got one more key in our hub. Another C-clip. You could run all the way out to that clip or you could go all the way in probably as far as that and really have a tight rear end. <laughs> That's what she said. I really just can't get over how freely this spins. Never out of the box have I had an axle that spins that freely. You know, a lot of times you have new seals in there and once they break in, they spin a little bit more free. Like if the tires are on there, you got a little bit more inertia, but I don't think ever I've had one, just the axle and hubs on there that spins so easily. I'm gonna to try to use those streamlined brake stays that were on the front A-arms. They're made for pipe that's just a little bit bigger, but I've got some rubber spacers in there and I think we can make it work. These are a pretty clean design. Looks pretty good. I want to stop for a minute to thank you for making it this far into the video. I also want to stop to thank the companies that helped to make this project possible. Thank you to Rocket Ron Racing, Cast Precision Industries, Full Flight Racing, DRW Performance, Dave Moore Racing, Hermosi, and Mod Quad Racing. These are all companies I trust and most of them I use on a regular basis. Links and promo codes will be listed in the description below. If you're enjoying the video so far and looking for a way to help out, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment below, or subscribing to the channel all help out a ton. Products and tools in the video are listed in the description below and purchasing from those links does help me out a lot. I get a small kickback from that and there's no extra cost to you and if you're looking to support the channel even further there is the option to join all channel members get guaranteed responses to their youtube comments all right guys i am done talking let's get back to the video this thing is starting to look really cool i don't know if the brake line is going to stay like that i tried to make it arc with the arc of the swing arm but man does that look sweet or what should clear the shock no problem at all it just looks so cool man and i still just can't get over how freely that spins, dude, it is freaking awesome. I wanna put the sand tires on here, but I think that it, we're basically obligated 
to see how much weight we're saving by switching the wheels over because I think that's gonna be a big difference and what do you know? I've got the scale of doom all set up and I've got both sets of tires right here. All right, let's zero this bad boy out. I've got the boards across there because these tires are freaking huge, man. So first we're gonna do the heavy ass motocross tires, man. These things are just heavy as hell, man. Nobody's really got the time or the strength. Nobody's got the strength to be lugging these things around, dude. 13 pounds for what? Just for, for geez. 31. <sighs> heavy, heavy, man. This is, this is not good. Working our way up to 45 pounds. And then this one last super heavy ass beadlock. 63.1. <laughs> Straight to the, they're going in the trash, man. Nobody's got time for OMFs. Heavy as shit, unreal. So now let's get these sand tires on. These things are super dusty, man, but even with the dust, I bet you will still save weight. Let's put one of these front tires on and see what we got. Whew. 10 pounds, man, already saving like three pounds per tire. Let's put the second one on, see if they're even. Yeah, 2.1 or 20.1, whatever. And these back tires, boom. And there we go, man. What do we got? 49.6. I can't even remember what the other one was because it was so high that I, I, it's like an unfathomable number. Nobody can count that high. I, I, I really can't remember. <laughs> I'll put it up on the screen. What was it? So it was like 15 pounds we're saving there? I don't know. It was a lot. It was 63 pounds. I had to go back and look. So we saved like 14 pounds in the wheels alone. That's pretty good, and it's all rotational mass. So this thing should be basically, basically as fast as a rocket ship, like a real one. And we'll get these 22s on the back. I think these are what really make it look like a sand racing machine. Dude, this looks really cool. And I'll show you what's even cooler. If we spin this around here, it really is starting to look like a drag racing machine, isn't it? It looks awesome. But uh, look, so I didn't tighten down those hubs. So you can bring these in or out. And I would say probably like right there is the safest that you could go. I mean, you could go tighter, but you want, I wanna make sure that I stay on that, that shaft key because last thing you wanna do is spin these things loose. Bring this side in. Probably right there is maxed out. And now, now it really looks like a drag machine, dude. <laughs> that looks awesome, man. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for the front end being so wide, I would do that. That just look, that totally looks like a drag racing quad. That's awesome. All right, let's drop this thing down and get it off the stand. See what it looks like. Oh, dude, it's tall enough that I can just push the stand out from underneath, but it looks good, dude. Now, as far as pegs go, since we've removed the Nerf bars, I've got these super giant fat pegs from Wicked Metal Designs. I think these might be the biggest pegs that you can possibly get for a 250R. They're, they're freaking massive. I used these last year when I had the plus three inch uh, swing arm on, and they're great, they really are, and they're not that heavy. They're about 2.9 pounds per side, so they weigh six pounds. I imagine you know we could probably get away with like lightweight pegs that are about a pound per side. So we'd be saving about four pounds if we got rid of these. I don't know that it's really worth losing the, the grip that you get with these things for four pounds of centralized, non-moving weight. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, not sprung weight or anything. So I think we'll just run them. However, the foot peg bolts have seen better days. They actually look terrible. So I'd ordered some brand new OEM foot peg bolts. So I'm not gonna install these right now, but that is what we'll be running. We're getting close to being finished with all the chassis mods. One thing I do wanna do is swap out these uh, precision bar clamps. These are great clamps, nothing against precision. I've just really fallen in love with the Hermosi bar clamps. So uh, Hermosi just came out with their Gen 2 bar clamps and they're supposed to be lighter than the Gen 1s. So when I heard lightweight, I was like, bro, I gotta run them. So Robert Hermosi sent me a set of the V2 clamps and we will swap these out. Hopefully we'll see if they're even lighter than the precision. You guys remember I had this thing set up so that you could see the temperature gauge right there on the bar mount. I was so scared of melting this thing down because the first two times I had it out, I melted it down both times. <laughs> These clamps are kind of a pain in the ass to remove because they slide over the bar. They're not actually like a two piece design that separates. Luckily, I've got these ODI grips, so I don't have to peel off the grips and then put new grips on. 
These can slide off and then I'll just take my throttle off and we should be good to go. I don't know guys, I think in this case, we might actually be gaining weight. So we've got the Precision on the left and the Hermosi V2 on the right. I'll show you some of the differences between the V1 and the V2 real quick. Basically, it's just in the clamp portion. This is the V1, the yellow one, and the blue one is the V2. Uh, that has nothing to do with the V1 or the V2, the color, that's just the type of compound. Yellow is soft and their blue is their more firm. So we are gonna be running the more firm compound for this, but if you look at the clamps alone, you can see how much beefier the V1 is. Uh, it's just unnecessarily big. You can see the size difference in the material there. And then the inside is smaller as well. Plus they downsized the hardware from this big bulky, I think these are M8s and they bumped it down to, it looks like M6s on the inside. The whole thing is just slimmer all the way around and it is lighter. You can feel it when you hold the two in your hand and we can check that out in a minute here too, but you can really see uh, the size difference is just, they downsized it. So same performance with just a little bit smaller and lighter package. Now I do believe, like I said, I think we're gonna be a little bit heavier than the Precision. But the thing is, this is called the 720 SBC because you get protection from all angles with this. So you're gonna get forward, reverse, uh, side to side, up and down, uh, all directions with the SBC 720, whereas the Precision is just up and down. So this paired with a stabilizer is a killer combination. It really does work very well. Uh, that's. Part of my angle though here though is I think that I can get rid of the stabilizer and in place run the SBC 720. And like I've said before, man, I just, I've been putting these on everything. I really, really like the way that these handle and they save my shoulders a ton. Let's see what the shit weighs. All right, let's zero out the scale, the scale of doom. And uh, first we'll do the precision. Like I said, I do believe this is, this is a smaller, more compact system. Probably we're gonna lose here, unfortunately. It, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna lose by gaining. So 1.634 pounds, pretty light, pretty light. And then we've got the beefy ass 720SBC. It's actually not as much, that much heavier than the other one. So it's like what that's, it's 0.4 pounds is the difference. What was that, 1.6? Not, yeah, so it's like 0.4 pounds. That's really not that bad. And we're definitely gonna lose that when we take the stabilizer off. Now, just because I'm curious, let's see how much weight they saved going from the V1 to the V2. The only portion that changed is the clamp and the hardware. So we'll weigh that against the V2. The V1 is 1.6 pounds, basically exactly what the entire precision weighs. And then the V2 is 1.3. So it's about 3.3 pounds lighter for the V2. Nobody cares what your stupid bar clamps weigh, Mike. Just freaking put them on and run the quad. I wanna see how fast it is. I know, I know. I get obsessed with this shit. These are only M6, so I'm gonna torque these to eight foot pounds. These don't need to be super tight. And while I'm here, I'm gonna upgrade to an Hermosi billet adjustable throttle. I did weigh this against the takeoff. They're almost identical in weight. It is two one hundredths of a pound difference in weight. So practically no change at all. The factory Honda throttles are actually very good. They have a cam system in them, which gives them a very short throw. And a lot of people will swap out like Yamaha throttles for the Honda throttles, especially the TRX90. That's a really popular one. The Hermosi has a little bit of a longer throw and it is adjustable. And I feel like with the longer throw of the throttle, it gives you a little bit more control. Like you can't, you won't be as snappy, but uh, I do like the feeling that these give. They have the uh, needle bearings in them. They're just very, very smooth, very premium feel. And you can adjust it on the fly, which I like a lot too. Last thing I wanna to remove today is the Precision Stabilizer. Now I understand that removing the stabilizer and putting on the SBC 720 bar clamps is not a replacement for this stabilizer. This is an Elite Stabilizer, which is the highest tier that you can get, and they are awesome, man. It's got high speed and low speed damping. In other words, at a slower speed, 
they're not, it's not gonna give you as much, as, as much resistance as at a higher speed, you're gonna get, it's gonna tighten up the bars even more and it helps with control in the whoops like crazy. So taking this off, yes, we are going to lose a little bit of that protection, but for what we're making this machine for, for drag racing, I just don't think it's necessary. I don't really plan on drag racing over whoops and stuff like that. So I think the ultimate combination would be having this and the SBC 720. So if we were gonna run uh, more rough trails or something, then I would leave this on here. But for now, I think it's just extra weight. So we're gonna remove it. I'm gonna bring it to the dunes. If I decide I wanna throw it back on, on it's very easy to in, uh, reinstall it. Dude, we're entering like bolt breaking territory here. Oh, I definitely didn't put NICs on this. Jeez, I'd like to avoid using heat if possible because I don't want to mess up our powder coat. This is pretty bad. I guess if it breaks, it breaks. He dies. He dies. Wow, we got lucky. Oh, super tight. All right, let's see what we lost here. I'm gonna say this weighs like two and a half pounds. Two pounds. You know, we're really splitting the hairs here. All of that performance loss for a net loss of 1.6 pounds. Is it really worth it? Definitely not. But are we gonna put it back on? Also definitely not. Now there is one more thing that I'd like to weigh before we move on, and that is this heavy ass engine. So this is the 309, 60.562 pounds. That's actually lighter than what I thought it would be. So we'll have to remember that. And then when we build the 380, we'll see how much weight we gain. I'm gonna guess like four pounds. Now there is one other thing that we have to open in this video, and then I'll let you guys go. But I think you're gonna wanna wait for this one. All right, we got a duct tape job. You know it's important when it's duct taped shut. Packing tape, it's just not gonna cut it in this scenario. I think we just have to face it, this is gonna be a mess. Oh, 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 oh. Might be able to guess what it is at this point. Oh, oh, oh. Now you know what it is. Good. Oh, 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 oh man. This is beautiful. This is really nice. This is the gnarliest pipe I've ever seen in my, my whole life. I don't even know what to say. This thing is freaking beautiful. So this is the pipe made by Scott Moser Racing. He got it to me in time, man. We were, we were, we were pressing, seriously, because these pipes are a ton of work. If you can't tell by the craftsmanship of this thing, it is a work of art and it is absolutely critical to performance. If you don't know much about exhaust, specifically with two strokes, the exhaust is just so important. You could have a perfectly built engine that's super high performance and if you put the wrong exhaust on it, you're gonna ruin everything. It's not gonna work right. It's, you think of it as a funnel. You can dump as much water as possible in it. If you have a small funnel, you're only gonna get so much water out of it. And there's more to it than that. It's not just the size of the exhaust, although that does have something to do with it. It has to do with the length of it, the angle of the cones, the size of the expansion, expansion chamber. A lot goes into this. This pipe is specifically designed for my engine. Dave Moore and Scott worked together and did a lot of testing on the dyno. And from what I understand, this is the very first one that is an in-frame design. They've only done out of frame so far. I was really close to ordering an out of frame because with the whole theme of this machine, I think that would actually look pretty cool. But we've got one of the first ever, I think the first ever in-frame from SMR. Really, really awesome. If you wanna order one of these, and he does Banshee pipes as well. I think he does pipes for 
uh, just about anything, uh, but he, he makes really, really top tier pipes. You can find him at Scott Moser Racing. The best way to contact him is on Facebook. Just mes message Scott Moser and let him know that I sent you. Uh, a pipe like this is not cheap. It's gonna go for around 900 bucks. Uh, that's just kind of what a, a hand cone pipe goes for. Uh, it's super premium. We've got, it looks like a solid aluminum. I don't know if it's billet, but it's a very nice solid silencer back here. It comes with an aluminum clamp kind of like a universal fitment so that wherever that ends up lining up. And then up here, you probably noticed this isn't the typical, you know, like slip fit like you would see on like an LED pipe. This is what's called a V-band style. He, he does send a V-band with it as well. This thing is not gonna leak. It's almost like inevitable on a slip fit pipe that it's going to leak no matter how much RTV you put on it. It's just gonna leak. And I'll show you guys my, uh, the LED pipe takeoff. This is an excellent pipe as well, but uh, you can see the slip fit. You can actually see the oil. Uh, that was leaking out of that just it's like over time that just happens uh, but look at the size difference dude it is incredible how much bigger this pipe is this is so awesome man uh, thank you scott for getting this to me in time i can't wait to get this together and of course we've got the natural finish on there now a lot of people were pissed at me for doing the silver cerakote on the led pipe i just got so tired of oiling those pipes if you've had a raw pipe before you know what I'm talking about. You gotta constantly oil it to keep it looking like this. Uh, I've heard and I've seen a few pipes that were clear Cerakoted and they look like this forever. So that's what I'm, my plan to do with this one. So it will look like this forever and I won't have to constantly be oiling it. But most of all, man, I can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like and how it performs. So again, if you're looking for a pipe for your two stroke, you can contact Scott on Facebook. Scott Moser is his name. It is Scott Moser Racing. Now, inevitably, we are going to gain some weight with that exhaust just from the sheer size of it. It is a bigger exhaust system, so we'll probably gain a little bit there, but I think it'll be well worth the performance gain that we're gonna get from that thing. So after seeing all of the comparisons of the old tires versus the new tires and stuff like that, you guys gotta let me know in the comment section below, what are your new guesses for the finished weight of this machine? Remember, we started at two or 365, so I'm gonna stick with that 330 pound range. I think that realistically we could lose 35 pounds total on this thing. This thing is going to be an absolute rocket ship. If we could get this below 300 pounds, man, that would be insane. Huge thank you again to all the companies helping bring this together. I cannot do this stuff alone, man. So many people are coming together to make this a possibility. Full flight with that swing arm. We've got Scott Mosier with the pipe. Um, we've got Gavin Miller is still making the intake, which is going to match that pipe excellently. I think that's the, the last part that we have for this thing. Uh, Dave Moore Racing is coming in, you know, helping out with a ton of stuff. Uh, Cast Precision Industries with a cylinder. Mod Quad is helping out a ton. Man, this thing is going to be absolutely awesome. And of course, thank you guys for watching my videos. I can't do this stuff without you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me out tremendously. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. I'm going to finish out the video by reading two comments here from the Tri-Z finale. If you guys haven't seen that, man, that thing turned out excellent. And I made some smoothies. I made a smoothie for the front. So the front tire is like uh, the ones on this 250R. I actually made that tire out of one of the old tires, and it came out really nice. Got the sand tires on there, and I fixed the shifter. So we, I took a, another, an, a different shifter, cut off the splines, welded it onto the factory shifter, and I also replaced the shift shaft in the engine because we don't want that to break down on the dunes. So from that finale video of the Chai-Z series, we've got one from C.D. Smith, 1990. He said, dude, I can't overstate how much we appreciate you doing these projects and making the epic videos in such detail. Hands down the best on YouTube. I smashed this one in a single sitting, LOL. The video's like an hour and a half long, so I appreciate you for that one. C.D. Smith, you are the man. And then the next one is from Charles Staler, 3434. He says, this guy is killing it. Come on, look at the effort my, my dude is putting in here. It's top notch. Love it all, Mike. Don't stop grinding. I've been here since the early days and it's only gotten better. I look forward to each post. Hold on to this one. She's special. Again, he's referring to the Tri-Z. It's comments like that to keep me going, guys. I get thousands of comments and I try to read all of them and I do read a ton of them. I can't get back to everybody, but I appreciate them all. So thank you guys for the amazing comments. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. I'm gonna have the 250R engine, the 309. I'm gonna tear that down on my own because we gotta get moving here, man. We, we're like eight days away at this point. So I will see you guys in that one. Peace out.